This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Guys, therapy has helped many of my friends and family. There is no need to feel bad or ashamed about going to therapy. Getting help is a part of the journey, and that's what BetterHelp does. Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. But what is therapy? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help you. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships or at work. Or you just have a lot on your plate. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. Right now is a special offer to my listeners, Lay Your Brick listeners. You can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash LYBCADE. That's betterhelp.com slash LYBCADE. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Guys, welcome back to another episode of Lay Your Brick. This week, we are joined by Kate Shervam. We talk about body positivity, how she uses her content online to embrace and empower women. We dive into her journey and why it's so important to her to find your style and be confident. Let's get straight into it. So you've been busy, obviously. You have you do many things constantly, right? <laughs> I do uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how have you been lately? You've been pretty busy with everything? I feel like... My life is just one constant energy struggle. (laughs) Just like, where do I put my eggs? Um, So as you know, uh, personally, I'm a full-time personal trainer. So I work a split shift, which is ungodly. And I don't recommend that to anybody in life. (laughs) And then when I'm not doing that, when I'm not being a personal trainer and doing all that, I and putting my life into other formats. Like I'm a social media content creator. Um, I like doing things that incorporate style and, and confidence and wellness and fitness. Um, I'm a painter. I like to decorate. Yeah. I don't know. I just do so many things. I, I try you. not to stay too uh, complacent in my life. Yeah. I like that. I, I stay busy too. I, I really enjoy doing that. Cause I think, staying busy for some reason is like, it's not even like a, I don't, we don't, I feel like you don't use it as a form of distraction either, but it's like, uh, it just keeps us busy and like creative with stuff. And like, you're obviously doing really creative things, your paintings and your content creating, like you have to be coming up with new ideas constantly for that stuff. Right. Yeah. So are those paintings behind you yours? Yeah. I, uh, I did those. They're really hard to see, but yeah, I, um, that's awesome though. I try to, uh, do, well, it's not in it's not even, I try to do as many things in my apartment that I create. I create everything because I'm not going to spend 50 bucks on a piece of crap from home goods. Like no happening. Yeah. No. So I saw for, for those of you that do not follow Kate, we're going to be talking about that on, on TikTok, but I see that you get up at 3 a.m. <laughs> 3 a.m. Yeah. So how many days, is that what you're talking about? The split shift. So how many days do you, a, a week do you do that? Okay, I'm going to start off by saying I would never recommend this to anybody. Like, yeah. I I do like this morning routine thing on TikTok and all that stuff where I show like my 3 a.m. routine. I don't think that anybody should have to get up that early. But um, so, yes, I work a split shift. My first class is at 5 a.m. on the daily, Monday through Friday. We start at 5. And so... My reasoning for getting up at 3 a.m. Um, is so I can work out at 4 a.m. So I get up at 3, do my little routine in the morning, put my makeup on, and then go lift at 4 a.m. and then start work at 5. So <laughs> dang. That's yeah, yeah that's early. That's early. It's sad when people text me and they're like, hey, I'm just going to bed. And I'm like, ew, we're on two different timelines here, bud. <laughs> Are you pretty good and like diligent about going to bed then like at a reasonable time to make sure you're getting like the hours of sleep or not? Uh, I mean, I used to be worse about it. Like I used to go to bed at like 1130, but now I take melatonin at like 830 okay. and I like force myself to go to bed. Yeah. Like, homie, you need this. Otherwise, you're gonna be a bear in the morning and nobody wants to deal with that. 
Yeah, that that would be a lot to do because, like, I don't know, for some reason, four. I've heard four a.m. Right, like, I've, people wake up four a.m. But like yeah. three a.m., that just seems like ungodly. <laughs> and honestly, I've contemplated two a.m. at times. I'm like, well, I kind of want to get a longer workout in, but I'm like, oh god, don't do it, don't do it. Yeah, that's basically not even going to bed. You just stay up at that point, I guess. But yeah. your regimen, I suppose. Yeah, would be different. Um. Let's start with that. So working out, right? I mean, you're everything. If if you follow her social media and you guys definitely check it out, um, is body positivity, right? Mm-hmm. So that's really really cool to see, and I've never seen it been represented the way that you do it. Sure. Right, and your representation just in general. Mm-hmm. So, how did you start working out? And and like, was there like a switch? that happened was it just one day where you're like i gotta start working out this i'm taking this seriously or was it more of just like many years of kind of doing it but kind of not like walk us through that process sure yeah it so i've always been athletic right you know i did sports growing up i was in basketball and volleyball all that stuff um so very athletic but i naturally have a body that just holds weight a little differently. I, um, I was kind of a chubby kid. I'm not going to lie, but what really sent me over the edge was around junior year of high school, I developed like crippling anxiety. Like I would say, um, the worst it's ever been was in high school from the time I woke up from the time I, you know, got out of bed. I, was in a state of panic until I went to bed. And one of my coping mechanisms was food um, because it took my mind off of my crippling anxiety. And I gained probably 15, 20 pounds in a year. And in, in, in high school, I weighed about 170 pounds. And for my 5'3 frame, that's just not ideal. Um, and I knew something needed to change. Um, I was in sports, so it's not like I needed to like try doing that. So I made the conscious effort to start moving my body outside of my sporting season. And in the hopes of like it distracting my brain in a different way so that I didn't have to, you know, use food as my mechanism. So I started just working out on my own outside of my volleyball basketball season. And um, I started seeing progress and that was really nice. Cause that, that showed me that working out is beneficial, not only physically, but mentally. Um, it wasn't until college that I taught myself how to lift. So I found this amazing woman on YouTube. Her name is Meg Squats. Um, she is my Arnold Schwarzenegger. She is amazing. And she, I owe so much of my fitness to her. Um, senior year of college, I found her on YouTube and I was like, you know what? She has like a similar body to me. I, I really resonate with this. Um, I have a strong body. I'm still not like a thin supermodel, never will be, but I resonate with her body and she is confident and kicking ass and, lifting all this weight. And I feel like I can too, because I've always been strong. So I taught myself how to lift based off her videos. And after senior year of college, I started losing the weight and gaining more muscle and developing a different relationship with my body. Um, And then since then, it's just been a like, like five or six years of trial and error. And and keeping up with it. Like through this whole journey, I haven't stopped working out. I have been working out since high school, um, but it's how I was doing it and what I was learning and changing my nutrition and changing how, how I'm working out, how I view my body. Um, and it's been, it's been a crazy journey and a crazy transformation, but I haven't fallen off the wagon. It's, it's been nothing like that. It's just been like finding what works for me and what fuels me. Yeah. Well, that's interesting too, because I mean, like you said before, 
you were athletic. So like you had that already in your bloodstream, right? And then that Meg squats, right? Like she inspired you and she still had the same, but so when you're comparing, not comparing, but let's move to that. When like you saw somebody that was like a role model to you, right? Mm -hmm. And like that inspired you to start lifting and, and changing the way that you just kind of look at life just in general, really. Mm -hmm. Um, so having that, those role models are super important. Like, did you ever realize at the time that she was like, she was actually really important to you? Um, I guess. Kind yeah. Of a question, but she, she, I think right away she was very important. And it, and I think it's for the lone fact that I didn't see anybody else that looked like me. Like I didn't see yeah. anybody around me that looked similar or had um, that sort of interest. And, and there could have been, but you know, I just had never crossed paths with it. Um, and so it made me not feel alone. And it made me feel like, oh, there's other people that have the same body type as me and, and whatnot. Um, there was a lot of comfort in that. And so right away, I, I resonated with her, even though I didn't know the magnitude of what she would become. Um, I really resonated with her. Is that kind of what made you go into content creating? Because that is what your page on TikTok and Instagram is about. Like it's, it's you, ha you, you are a voice for other people and other body types like you, which is really I cool don't think inherently it was, it was her, but deep down there could be some like deep rooted appreciation for that. So maybe, um, but to answer that question, I, I feel like the reason I started it all was, was yes, because I couldn't find bodies that looked like me on social media and doing content creation and style stuff and, and all that. And so I created what I couldn't find or created what I needed growing up. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So when did you start creating stuff then just in general art and content creation? Um, senior year of high school is when I started painting. Um, okay. I've always been artistic, but I, I was like, you know, what? I'm going to be a painter. That's what I'm going to do. So I started that pretty late. <laughs> um, and I also did like makeup and stuff. So I've always been like creative and all that jazz. Yeah. Um, but as far as content creation, it was a little bit of stumbling and a little bit of just being a perfectionist. Like I've been trying to perfect my Instagram for years. You know, I think we all just get, I don't know, overwhelmed with Instagram a little bit, but I had reached a point where I was like, you know what, my, my pictures suck. I'm going to, I'm going to level up. I'm going to do better. So then I just <laughs> trying to do better. Yeah. And I was like, okay. These are, these are kind of neat. And then as far as like going, you know, full bore into it, um, it started after like, just, I was like laying on my couch kind of like I am and I was watching YouTube and I was looking at like, um, style halls and like outfits and stuff. Cause I love that stuff. And, um, I was like, well, you know, I really like this brand or this outfit or this whatever, but will it, would it ever fit me? And so I like tried to find people on YouTube that had my body. And I was like, God, there's nobody. There's literally nobody with my body. And how am I going to know if any of this is going to fit? And am I going to waste my money? And yada, yada. And after that moment of being just so fed up, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be that person. I love fashion. I love style. I love outfits. I'm going to put on some shit and film it. And maybe somebody else will be like, you know what? We have the same body. You know, that's going to fit me. And that's kind of how it started. And it's been, I'd say a year and a half, two years since I started trying to do better with that. And, and now I'm here. That's really cool because you're, you're literally the definition of be the change that you want, right? Like that, that's what yes. you did. You, you, you took something that wasn't out there and then that's where you created it. Yep, exactly. That's so cool. I, it really, you know, and I mean, let's get into the, the deep, the deep of it. Like your, mm -hmm. your body type is 
you wrote athletic and smaller chest, right? Like that's, yeah. that's a huge thing. And I think yeah. like you've said on your social media and just in general, mm-hmm. that that's not like a regular occurring thing for like models and certain stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. So what has that into, like, I know this is super like whatever, but like, what is that? It's a big question, but like, what does that entail then so far for you? Because now you were taking that because you do have style and I want to dive into that, like a separate thing, but like Mm -hmm. you got that and then you got your body type and then you got lifting on top of that and you got, so you got a million different things. And yeah, I mean, how, how has that helped you just you in general right because i think obviously you affect other people that's a that's it's known you got instagram followers you got tiktok followers and you and you're yeah. you're seeing feedback from from them constantly and i've looked at like comments and and um likes and all that and like you're being heard for what you're saying and what like you're speaking which is really important obviously as a content creator but just as a person in general too like isn't it kind of surreal that like people are like looking up to you and be like, yeah. Hey, like this, this girl, like Kate, she's showing me that like, like there's other people that are out there like me and I can have style and I can be bold and do whatever I want to do. Yeah. It's, it's super weird, especially, especially when people know me from the gym and they're like, you, you do that. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cause I walk around with like an oversized sweatshirt. Like I am right now. <laughs> yeah. like, you, you style stuff. I'm like, please just let me, let me be a hobo Monday through Friday. Just, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, no, it's very surreal. It's very heartwarming and, and I definitely get imposter syndrome from it. Like I definitely yeah. do. Um, but, uh, there's there's this really beautiful like power that I've cultivated from it and like a confidence like I have confidence in general but when you have to be the voice for like a niche group or like represent others and kind of um be the one in the limelight for them you have to develop this like sense of security and power and admiration for yourself and so Mm -hmm. you kind of have to put on that hat even if you don't want to and there's there's been videos where I've had to make content and I'm just like not feeling it like my body just doesn't feel good that day I don't feel confident but you have to like I, I don't know just like own it and and put that shit aside and be like I have to do this today even if I don't feel like it and practicing that over and over allows you to um I don't know, not have those negative feelings as much. I don't know how to describe that. Yeah. Um, but you put yourself out there enough and you start to believe and admire yourself way more. I agree. And you're in the way that like your fashion and your style works, like you're bold. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. For especially for North Dakota, especially for Fargo. Yeah. Yeah. Like, ugh. Like I definitely get some, some like head turns and not like in like a ooh way. It's like a, Oh, she's going to wear that way. And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's interesting too, because, okay. So like, how do you deal with, right? Because this has probably started since you were, I don't know, middle school. Like, like we, we all have this problem, but like, how do you deal with battling what other people think? Right. Cause now like people just in general have to battle that on day to day but now you're doing it on the internet yes which amplifies it a lot so especially with how important like advocating for your body type is it's like how do you not care what other people think i have a, i had a episode on this on my podcast about caring what other people think and and i it just always interests me because everyone's response is always different and and how it works all together. So how do you battle that? And how do you work through that? And do you still like kind of care what other people think to this day? Yeah, well, I will be honest. Like at one point in my life, I did care too much. You know, we, it's not like I'm immune to that. But I think over the years, getting older, practicing um, self-worth, and um 
just knowing that I, you can't live your life for somebody else. You can't live your life to please others. Yes. And age helps getting older helps. It de definitely does. Um, but I feel like I've built my self-worth while so high that the people that are trying to come at me, they just can't climb it. Yeah. Like I hear it, I see it, but does it like get me? No, like they need to try harder. Like it's not going to affect me. Like you're, you're way down there. I'm way up here. Yeah. You can't, um, it, you know, from time to time there is, comments and, and whatnot that just make me wonder why people have to be that way. Um, <laughs> but, but it never, I never lay awake at night and, um, let it consume me. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So how do you, how would you recommend to build your, build your self-confidence to that level that you have it at, right? Like such a high standard or what'd you mm -hmm. say? I can't remember exactly the, the, what you said, but the, how do you do that? How do you recommend that? I, I wish I could tell you the exact formula. There is nothing. Yeah. I feel like what has helped me is self reinvention. And not that that's an answer to anything, but always making sure that you are becoming your best self. And when you are doing that for yourself, you, you are showing yourself so much love and worth. Um, and, and a little bit of exposure therapy. A little bit like I'm not saying like I want you to go up to the, this random person and have them be mean to you but like yeah. the more that you are open to experiences and and feeling certain ways and experiences like let me let me give you an example because it's way too abstract for me to <laughs> talk about. yeah like um so there was this outfit that I wanted to wear and I was super nervous about people seeing me in this outfit and I was, I was nervous that they were going to judge me, especially here, um, in a very modest state. And I was petrified, but I wanted to wear this outfit. And I was like, what, why am I so afraid of this? It's clothing. So I put it on and I filmed this, this night that I went out and wore this outfit and how nervous I was about it and all the things I were thinking that I was thinking, um, and I felt good. I looked good, went out. Nobody said a dang thing. Nobody looked at me weird. Nobody brought it up. I went home, posted it. And the amount of people that commented on that video was crazy. They were like, oh my God, thank you for making me feel secure um, about doing this type of thing. And um, I'm afraid of this too, and this and this and this. But it was breaking that ice with that fear or breaking the ice of, what will people think that allowed me to do it again and again and again? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and now I just, I really care so much less about what I wear in front of people and all that stuff. So I feel like the same thing can go for how people talk to you or think about you, you know? I agree with that. You know, the thing I was thinking about too is being able to, like you said, go out and test that. But we just in general think like that people are staring at us constantly when in reality, like we're obviously our biggest critic. So like that's, you know, and it's really interesting. And also, I know you know this for a fact, mm -hmm. but like when we put something on and we wear something that we feel confident in and like we like and we think we look good, then that exudes confidence, right? Yes. So then why would somebody come up and say that we're owning it? Like we're doing it, you know? So it's a really interesting like thing because why do we we get so in our heads about it? But yeah, I'm glad you made that video. That that is really moving. Yeah. The same with the gym. Nobody's looking at you at the gym too. Yeah. Unless you're doing something completely dumb like, like <laughs> yeah. breaking a mirror or or dropping the weights um and breaking garbage, like nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody just do your stuff. That was like the biggest thing too. When I, when I started my fitness journey, I was like a little nervous to start working out in like an actual public gym. Yeah. But, but as I did it more and more, I realized no one is looking at me. Like no, yeah. everyone's worried about themselves. They're in their own spot. And like, that's why I really like it. Cause like for me, fitness just in general now is like more of a getaway. Like I do it every single day at a certain time, you know, and 
and that for that hour, like I put my phone on do not disturb sometimes. And that's really interesting. I want to talk to you about that actually really quick, because what do you think of this? Is just like an offhand thing, but what do you think about people that go, I know everyone has different fitness goals, but I see a lot of people go on their phones at the gym and they are like in between sets or literally on the machine just on their phone like that doesn't make any sense to me right because like the gym is like a place where we go and we hone in we do our thing but I don't I just want to know your thoughts on that um it it's definitely amusing it's it um I we've definitely seen people just show up to the gym to take a selfie and go home (laughs) like it happens it happens um I would say my rule of thumb is just don't be an asshole. Like yeah. if you're going to be on the machine on your phone and like taking up the machine for half an hour and people are just like waiting around for you, like that's when it gets to be like a problem. Like, yeah. but get off TikTok, <laughs> finish your leg extensions and move on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I feel like as a trainer, we, I don't know. We notice these things. It doesn't bug us. We just know who's who's hungry and who's not. Yeah, exactly. Who's exactly. going through the motions and who wants to who wants to level up. Yeah. And so we can kind of tell from an outside perspective, like who's really in it. For sure. For sure. So going back to <laughs> the outfits and confidence. Um, so have you always kind of had like your own style that you like to do? Okay. So like, oh yeah, I was an emo kid in high school, in middle school. Just, <laughs> just the one that never fit in as far as style goes. Like everyone's wearing like lacy, cute things and and flowers, and I was like, give me skulls, black and leather, and we're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how was that shaped? Your like. I don't know how to word that, but like, how, how has that helped you now? Right. Because I, what? I think that, um, I think that was like the start of not caring. Like I tested everything out early there. Cause that was like a small town. Yeah. Everybody had like knows your business in a small town. So like, that's the most judgmental um critic or like stage is like a small town mm-hmm. life and and being different um and i think that i i get I, like i did all my experimenting with style and stuff back then and then once i was out of high school and moved away then it was it didn't really feel like i was trying to be different i was just already myself you know yeah so um and granted like my style has evolved over the years like I wear different things but but the the I don't know the mantra behind it kind of all blossomed in in high school so that makes sense yeah I mean the confidence thing is really uh, a big thing because I think a lot of people struggle with it you know and I, I think it's really cool that your platform dives into it and owns it Mm -hmm. you know just in general but it's not like it's not fake like you can obviously tell sometimes like fake confidence and and other things like that but but yours is real like it's it's based off of a lot of like hardships and things that you've been through yeah right and so you're helping other people you're helping other girls with these with these um these attributes and it's really interesting to me because as obviously from a guy's perspective like I don't know what you guys go through on like that Mm -hmm. basis right so it was when I kind of found out about the opportunities like I want to do this because I want to learn like I want to I want to figure out like what you guys go through and and how how big of a deal it becomes for the individual yeah with that what do you think what do you hope that your audience like gets out of you because I feel like a lot of people are going to get confidence and um, obviously like style recommendations and places to shop and things like that from you. But like, what do you really hope that you, you are doing and you are yeah. telling these people? 
I, my sole purpose is to like make women not feel ashamed or alone or, or broken in their body. Um, I don't, I don't know how far you dug as far as comments on any of my videos go, but there are quite a few men in my comments that will say derogatory things about my body and, and how I look and, and bring up how I, how different I look in comparison to most women. Um, and, and how that I should change my body, um, for society or for them or to, to make them feel better. Um, and that's hard, uh, for someone that has high self-confidence, it's not as bad, but let's say, let's say I wasn't, uh, that way. And, um, cause I know that these comments are given to women that don't have self-confidence mm -hmm. and I hear it from them. I hear it from my, my followers. They say people, men, people, family, friends tell me all the time and they make fun of me and they, um, want me to change my body and they they think that I don't look like a woman and they they say I look like a boy and they um it hurts my feelings and my my goal is to bring them some peace and some comfort and um I just don't want them to feel like they're in this alone and that they can't feel feminine um I want them to feel powerful and bold and um, to not struggle with this, this, um, need to change who they are to make others feel better. Yeah. What a powerful message. I mean, I think when like we compare ourselves to the other people, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that just sets a whole another problems in front of ourselves. Right. Yeah. And so that's, it's really, really cool. I cannot understate this enough, like, or overstate this enough, like that you have that audience that they do like trust in you and like rely on you and like get that from you because mm -hmm. you can see it in the comments, right? And and you talk to them too. You have conversations with them. So it's really an interesting thing because you're more of like a niche market yeah for sure right so that's just like a whole different thing to like jump onto like you the fact that like these girls are making sure or you're making sure that these girls are not feeling alone in this world mm -hmm. that we have and i mean has the, like what were you surrounded by in your childhood or just life in general, like did anybody else like make you feel that way? Yeah. I guess besides. I, I'm from a small town. We had 600 people in our town. Like I look, I looked around and saw nobody that had the same body as me or the same um, insecurities, uh, especially during puberty and development and all that stuff. Like all the girls around me were developing and I wasn't. And I, I, would Google and, you know, ask my mom and ask my doctor, like, what's wrong with me? Like, what's going on here? And so growing up, it wasn't easy to, to not see any diversity. And I know there is in this world because I am told it on the daily and thanked for the, for it on the daily. But, um, before social media became a thing, I thought I was the only one. And I thought there was something like medically wrong with me. Mm that had to be really tough. Yeah. Especially, um, especially when you hear comments all the time about what a woman's body should look like and yeah. like, and what is sexy and what is desirable. And so I grow, I grew up thinking like, well, I'll never get married. Like no one will ever want me or like me. And, and that's the mentality I had was like how to please a man. It's not what it should be. It, but that's what I was like fretting over was, am I ever going to get married or, or will anybody ever like me or have kids or take me seriously or think I look good? Or will I be able to wear clothes that all the other women are wearing? And it was very consuming. Very. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's like the 
the tough part. That's why I, you know, wanted to take my time and be able to really understand like the other side of things, because it's a very, I, I don't want to say like delicate, but like it, 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 like, it's not a, it's not talked about a lot at all. Right. Like, kind of, I guess. Right. And so, I mean, how, how do you utilize your social media for all of that then? Like, because obviously these people are getting personal with you, but like how personal do you get with them and what ways have they really, how, how have they affected you too? Like it's incredible. The amount of messages I've gotten private messages from women. Um, I mean, you'll see like the, the public comments, you know, Oh, thank you. Blah, 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 blah. But then But then you get the private messages that are paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of them venting their insecurities and issues and what has happened to them in their life, how they've been treated and talked to and looked down on and been told to change and been told that they're ugly or worthless or gross or there's something wrong with them. Um, So you get those messages, but then you also get the ones that are very uplifting that say, Thank you for showing me how to love my body for the first time in my life. And wow. those, those make you take a step back. And sometimes I can't even reply right away. Cause it's just, it's crazy. Um, what's something so, so like what you thought was so insignificant can matter so much to somebody else. Like it's just a video, but that video could have changed their perspective on their, their life and their body and their future. Um, and we're capable of, of changing so many lives and we don't even know it. Um, so it's been a very beautiful thing. And, and I'm not even kidding when I say like hundreds of women reach out and that's just a small fraction of what it could be. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I can't say it enough to like you, you affect the people that follow you. Right. I mean, that's, it comes down to that. Um, have you ever had guys message you about like what you're doing or saying that it's powerful or anything like that? Yep. I definitely do get men um, that are fully supportive. And I think that's wonderful as long as it comes from a sincere place yeah. and not a, you're, you're a hot lady. Let me just <laughs> yeah. miss you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do. I do have quite a few men that are very supportive. Even um, people that know me in real life, um, they they tell me they they're like, oh, I don't understand half the stuff that you're talking about. But I support you as a person and as a movement and as someone who is looking to change other people's lives. And it, mm-hmm. I think it's really awesome that um, that they are on board, even if they don't understand it. Yeah. Yeah. I just had something and now I lost it. Um, <laughs> oh. It'll come back at the most random spot. I know. The balance that you have in your life, right, between painting and your full time job, and I mean, making, okay, yeah, let's dive into that really quick because I, I just thought about this. Okay. So, it's a different way that you are affecting people. Yeah. Like, did you ever realize this, that like through personal training, like you're helping other people become, I guess it, whatever it means to them, but like become more confident in their bodies and be thankful for their bodies and like that they want to grow. And I mean, you're affecting them that way too, as well as like on your social media too. So that's, that's yeah. really interesting oh, 200%. yeah yeah i'm 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 almost too aware of it like i've always loved a good transformation like even in the movies and they're like oh sit down we're gonna we're gonna transform you into somebody new i was like oh this is my favorite part of the movie like yeah i've always loved a good transformation self-reinvention working on yourself trying to be better um and so yeah this is it's all intentional i think because I wish I would have had that help growing up. And so now I feel like it's my purpose in life to, to do that, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I like that because I think your 
your purpose and like your passions, they are all for other people. Yeah. And helping and serving. And that's mm-hmm. what it is. That's how you know you've really found something that you love and enjoy doing because it's not about you. It's about how other pe- how you're affecting other people. Mm-hmm. And so it, I mean, have you ever looked back now to where you're at now from like the start of all of this um, and just been like, what? Like I, I affect like these people constantly. Like that's. Yeah. I, uh, I filmed a, a TikTok trendy video um, where it was like you talking to your past self. Mm. Like it's one of those. Um, it, this was like a year ago. So um, I filmed that video and it was it was me now talking to my high school self and um, just like updating my past self on what's all been going on and all that stuff. And my past self was like, well, did this happen? And did this happen? And you know, answering all those questions and I making that video I bawled in the video I'm crying those are real tears I bawled my eyes out <laughs> because it was so surreal to see how far it's all come and if I had to talk to me from junior year of high school she would have been like shut shut the heck up like no like there's no way that I that's ever gonna happen and it was such a beautiful like I don't know, uh, just like a beautiful moment of, of reflecting on the journey that it's Mm -hmm. all been. Yeah. I bawled so hard. Oh, I cried. Well, like that's your journey is like the biggest part. I mean, we hear that all the time. Like it's the journey, not the destination, but I mean, it really is. Cause it's like now it's the people that you're affecting. It's not how many people you're going to affect. Right. Like obviously you will affect more. And I, I think you're going to grow and grow and grow, but that's like, I think it was really cool because for a moment for me was like, I started YouTube and like these podcasting and stuff like that. And I never knew I went into it with the wrong intentions, but I, I went into it nonetheless and I started doing it. And then I realized like, Whoa, like because of the numbers now, like, like I have like 150 subscribers or something on YouTube. And like, that doesn't seem like a lot because we're so used to like millions. Right. Right. But, and I feel like this is in your scenario as well. It's like, Whoa, but I get to, affect these people that actually watch these videos or listen to this podcast and like it doesn't matter if it's a million or 10 Mm -hmm. like these people are changing and one of the biggest things that i just realized too uh, a couple days ago i was talking to one of my friends that i've had on the podcast and she was telling me that like people were reaching out to her about her podcast but i never get like reached out to personally about the podcast and like how it was and obviously mine's like very guest focused mm-hmm. but it's interesting because i get to affect these people but i don't know so it's like an outsider's perspective so i, I really love it. so so people listening if this affects you at all like let me know because it's really nice to hear and then it also gives me that boost of motivation to keep doing this yeah. and keep talking and having these conversations so for you like do you I mean, your uh, affection, everything is online, right? I mean, everyone, that's kind of, that's how you kind of measure it. Do you ever get lost in like the analytics of it or no? Like, do you just really enjoy it? I, I'm not the best with analytics. Like, I'm not going to lie. Numbers are like, I'm, I'm okay with them. I'm not yeah. bad, but it's, I'm more of like a, um, I'm more of a artsy creative and so like the analytics just don't get me like excited. So I don't really yeah. focus on them too much, but mm-hmm. I do, I do get affected by like ruts. So like, whether that's not feeling like I want to do anything or just like, if my views are low or like right now I'm going through a low view period on TikTok and it makes me think, oh crap, am I, am I shit? Am I bad? And then it's those moments that make you feel like, should I just quit? But then you have to be like, well, 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 I'm just having a moment. We just got to push through it. And mm-hmm. then it'll come back. It's, it's all like an ebb and flow. It's, it's an algorithm. Yeah. So, um, I do hit points where I'm like, God, do I just, am I bad? Am I, do I suck? But then what I do 
is I go back to my first couple of videos that I've ever done and I watch them and I see how much has changed quality wise, <laughs> content wise. And I'm like, you know what? You've, you've like improved so much. And just, just think of what is going to happen in a year from yeah. now. Um, and that's what, that's what fuels me to keep going is just knowing that things are getting better and people will reach out and say like, Oh my God, your content is like really grown and gotten so professional and that helps. That's really nice to hear. Um, what's, what's like the biggest thing that you do that's super important to you and how it affects this is such a broad question. Sorry. Like what, what is something that you physically do um, every day or, you know, week, whatever that affects yourself and how you perceive yourself. And it's changed over the years, obviously, but that would help somebody else going through the same things, whether they have the same body type as you, whether they're athletic and, and a lot of people are like lifting wise and stuff. Um, like what what is that like is there something there that you say to yourself or do to yourself that helps you with that I and this is this is taken obvious practice and stuff but how I put myself together not only clothing wise but just mentally physically and then aesthetically how I put myself together is really affected um that and and also is affecting how my future will go because um i'm trying to establish habits mm. that will benefit my future and will get me to a place where this like higher self is yeah and, you know like you hear like the the billionaire routines and all that stuff i don't do that necessarily but i do I do incorporate habits daily that make me transition into this higher self that I want to become or am becoming, I guess, am becoming. Yeah. Um, and I do that on the daily and I, and I make sure that I work out every morning. I make sure that I'm carrying myself in a way that is admirable. I make sure that I'm not being walked all over. I make sure that I'm confident and assertive and that I'm doing my job well. And, and when I have my free time that I'm setting myself up for success, whether that's getting the sleep that I'm lacking at night or it's researching things that will benefit me in the future, whatever it may be. So I'm setting up little habits. I don't know if that answers your question, but I feel like that's the closest thing I could do. No, it does. Yeah. Like for me, like, I don't know, like I started journaling. Like I started doing that, like either every morning or every night. And that's insane. Like it's the same thing that you're talking about. Like the, the higher self that we want to become, you know, like that's, it's super important to me. And I've taken like, you know, the proper steps as far as that, um, you know, with reading and like, and mm -hmm. being more aware of certain things. And one of the biggest things that's really cool is that I get to talk to people every single you know week and a new person and, and get to see their side and how what they grew up with and what what they've been through and so for me like that's really cool because i i'm like basically researching all this sort of stuff to see how life could turn out or you know the like best things to do and that's why i asked you that question and you did answer it yeah um i don't know like how you do most of the things that you do i mean through your day i value the fact that you are so a present on social media and and the stance that you that you've taken like i really do i i, I applaud you in that because it's a hard thing to do but you became an advocate for something that wasn't really out there yeah that that's starting like a whole new mold like it's not yeah. like it's you know been done before sort of way like and that's so i just wanted to say thank you for doing that <laughs> oh, that's, that's that's very sweet coming from a perspective of like not like you're it doesn't affect you but you can appreciate it and i think that's really nice yeah exactly and i so like what's something that other people can do to like even myself but to better understand 
your scenario just in general but in body body positivity for women in general how can we women and men be better about saying posting commenting any all of that i think listening is the the biggest thing and and as people we need to do better at that but listening when people are saying this is how i'm hurting you know and just listening and just even if it's even if you have no advice just let them vent to you this is how i'm feeling this is how, what's happening just listen um and and we all need to watch how we talk about other people and their bodies too um because it, it's not it's not our body it's not our choices to make we can we can give them love and and support and all that stuff um but as far as like people need to to do better about like their troll comments like like yeah. you know what i mean yeah like i i don't know how people get to that place in their life where they think they need to be that way um hurt people looking, hurt people exactly yeah. and i say that all the time hurt people hurt people and it's it's true um so i think we need to work better on ourselves to be better people um so that we can treat people better um because it's a cycle like these insecurities weren't created out of nothing no you know yeah. So, um, we need to start with that and just when, and I feel like as a woman, um, and maybe like a male to female dynamic, I just admire support. And even if it's shares to get that boosted out to a better audience, you know, like, even if you have no interest, it doesn't affect you at all it is being pushed out to a brand new audience that is being able to see it. And so it doesn't matter that it has nothing to do with you, but if, if you want to support it, share it. Or, or if you see or hear somebody talking negatively about a woman or how she looks or her body, tell them to f- fuck off. Like, stop doing that. Like, no, that's not okay. Like, don't mm-hmm. let it happen. Um, and I, th- I think that's the easiest way to go about it right now. Yeah, stopping in it, stopping it in its tracks, right? Like yeah, just like bullying. Talking. And you know, when you when you're a kid, and you learn about bullying. Same thing. It's just as adults. Yeah, which it's <laughs> worse, especially with social media now too. Like yeah. it's because everyone can hide behind a screen and not be able to really like. And yeah, I mean to go back to that, like hurt people, hurt people. That all of that is coming from a place of their own insecurities and their own yeah you know which is really interesting when you think about it and it's hard to think about it like that when you're in the position of like finding your yourself and being confident right because you have those people then and that are saying those things to you and and it gets to you it does but if you can look at it from an outsider's perspective if you try to like this person doesn't even know me especially on the internet right like you run into that probably all the time like this person has they don't know me at all. So like, who cares what you say? Or like, do you ever snap back on comments? Like, obviously I feel like you're more of like the high ground and that makes more sense because you don't want to stoop to the level, but how do you respond to people that are negative on your social medias? And, and, oh, I, and really I, quick, oh, oh, go for it. Go for it. Sorry, really quick. I want to say, how would you tell somebody like a younger you to respond or not to respond or like how to ignore that? I guess I either don't reply or I call them out. I have no issue doing the pin of shame. I will let the other ladies tear them apart like wolves. Yeah. Like no, if, if they want to be seen and have attention, they're going to get it, but it's not going to be good. No. Yeah. Like, I have no issue calling people out. I'm actually not that nice when it comes to that. <laughs> crap. Yeah. I, I think I put up with being nice for too long and I was like, Nope, you're not going to talk to me that way. Yeah. Nope. Nope. I'm going to, Nope. We're not doing that. So, um, I used to play the passive aggressive Midwest. Nice. You know, I'll give no, nope, no, nope, no, I'm not going to be <laughs> probably not the best to give advice for that. But if I was to talk to my younger self, I don't think I would come from that angle. I would come from an angle of a, 
me to past self. Let's work on us. Okay. Let's not, let's not deal with that right now. Let's work on us. You know, like, because if you don't have that self-worth built up, your, your reaction to them is never going to matter. Like no. it's, it's never going to help, but never going to get better if you don't have self-worth. So I would, I would work on that first. What are some things that you have worked on? Like for self-worth, what are some key components that has helped you along your journey? Um, the gym that has yeah. been the yeah. biggest thing was working on my body and knowing that I have power over my body and how it looks and feels and moves and all of that. Um, changing how choosing how I eat also, you know, goes right along with it. Having the power to choose what I feel my body with and how it feels and, and whatnot. Um, and just trial and error has also helped over the years. Just, I, I literally am a different person every year. I look different. I dress different. I put myself together different every year. And, um, I don't know. It, it's just, it's something that has helped me appreciate myself in all of its complexities. Yeah. Um, because we should always be changing. We should never be the same. So our self-worth should always be changing with us. And, um, if you allow yourself to try new things and be new people and experience new emotions, um, it's just honoring yourself better than, than allowing yourself to be in this little tiny box. Yeah. I like those answers. I really do. Well, kid, I want to say thank you. Um, we are at the portion of the podcast where we have three end questions, Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> but before we get to that, I do want to say, so all of your, your Instagram and your TikTok will be linked down below because I know your last name is yeah. <laughs> a little tricky. And so for people that don't know, but um, is there anything that you want to say else for either advocating yourself or body positivity or just in general to the audience? I, you kind of already touched upon it, but my, my biggest thing is be the change that you want to see. Yeah. And I've, I, that's been instilled in me. And I hope that people also take upon that too. And, and if there's something that you want in life, just be that, like, do that, make it happen. Yeah. No, one's going to do it for you. So you, you have to do it yourself. Yeah. No one, that whole, um, I don't know if I'm sure you've seen it, but like that whole, uh, there's like that TikTok trend for a while, at least on mine, uh, it was like, no one's coming, no one's coming for you. Like no one's going to help you do what you need to do. Yeah. And again, I just want to like, it's so cool to me that you have, like you basically invented something like, cause that's what it is. Like you <laughs> started some, obviously there's been other influences and stuff, but like you started a niche and you started helping other people because it wasn't out there for you that you didn't see. Mm-hmm. And that takes courage and that takes yeah. bravery and it takes a lot of determination and willpower. And like your character has been tested over the years that you've done this. And that is something that will never be able to be taken away from you. Mm-hmm. Like, so I applaud you in that. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And then, all right. So are you ready for the first question? <laughs> I'm ready. All right. What is a daily habit that has changed your life? Oh, that easy working out. Oh my God. That's like, that's like a, that's a, that's a no brainer. Um, working out easy. That's awesome. I like that. I like that. Cause I do that too. (laughs) And then this one, you kind of already said to me, but how would you consider your purpose in life right now? Um, being for me, it's being the role model I wish I had. And in return, being the role model that other people need. Wow. So, yeah. Being the role model that other people need. All right. Last one. Um, you are rapid firing these. Some, uh, some people take, uh, take their long time, which I, you know, everyone's different. So I like this. I feel like um, these are how these go. These are the rapid fire questions. Yeah. These are what, um, get your brain thinking at the very end uh what is something that you know that you wish others knew oh god now you leave me with a hard one (laughs) (laughs) something that i know that i wish others knew um that your potential is way more than you think Mm. i hear a lot of i can't do this i can't be that i can't lose the weight 
I can't do this. There's all this self doubt, but you literally have so much more power than you think you do. And you, you can change by just forming different habits and, and allowing yourself to have what you want. I think we, we hit ruts, we hit plateaus. We don't let's, let's just say weight, for example, we, we don't see the change. We don't see what we want because we don't think we deserve it, but you deserve all that you ever want in life and you're capable of it. You just have to allow yourself to feel like you deserve it. Very well said. And also I love that response so much because of the fact that I one of the biggest, like my mission in life is to know, to let other people know that they can do whatever they want to do their potential. Right. Can you say that one more, the potential part really quick again? I don't even know if I can say it again, because it just, I literally pulled it straight out of nothing. It was awesome. Um, it was like, your potential is on. Well, whatever. We'll listen to it again. <laughs> like, But yeah, it was, uh, that really hits home for me because I think a lot of people out there and especially the people that are listening to this podcast, I feel like they're taking the extra step to understand and find something in their life that they are passionate or they are following their purposes in life. And it's like, it's super key because you can do whatever you want to do and why sit here and live like an, you know, just a mundane life of, you know, not trying things like that's what, if you're not failing, you're not trying, right? Like, you got to go out there and do things and try things. It's, I get super pumped out about it, but <laughs> yeah, we don't live complacent lives here. No. And there's no point. Like why, why try living safe? Like mm. why try living safely? Like you, you're going to die eventually. Right. So yeah. you might as well you don't try want to do it. Not doing the things that you wish you did. Yeah. Progress is huge. Well, Kate, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and, having you coming on here it was it Thank was you. awesome and i hope other people i really appreciate it it lets me get my story out to a different audience i think that's really fun yes i agree well thank you thank you